Since 1945, the United Nations has been responsible for maintaining international peace and security. Commonly referred to as the UN, the organization promotes social rights, better living conditions, and human rights. As part of this mission, several UN agencies are deployed to countries that are looking to maintain peace and prevent the outbreak of conflict. Deployed agencies, such as UN Peacekeeping Forces and the UN Refugee Agency, must set up temporary housing for UN forces and internationally displaced persons, often quickly and under situations of duress. These camps, although temporary, will place additional stress on local resources. Broadly, what that means for communities um, is that they don't have access to the resources they need for their livelihoods. These resources often include water, timber, and minerals. Resource scarcity is easily compounded, limiting traditional uses of natural reserves. The first challenge that humanitarian organizations faced or peacekeeping um, organizations is how do you provide basic human needs? How do you provide water to these people? Although UN peacekeeping missions have been taking place since 1948, formal policies on the environmental effects of these missions had not been developed until 2009. Water, necessary for everyday survival, is a top priority for those affected by conflict. Water scarcity currently impacts 1.2 billion people around the world. Countries experiencing conflict are twice as likely to lack access to clean water as compared to other developing countries. So what's really interesting about water is that it's very rarely been a cause of conflict, but um, it does, you do see water playing an increasing role as a source of tension. Scarcity, overuse, and mismanagement of water resources in post-conflict countries can prolong instability and dampen efforts to build peace. Water used in peacekeeping operations and refugee camps can exacerbate both the quantity and quality of water available. Time and time again, it plays out that um, resources, use of resources, is a driver and a cause and perpetuates a lot of the conflicts that we see. Peacekeepers consume almost 10 million liters of water a day in their routine operations. A UN peacekeeper, for example, requires 84 liters of water per day. It is therefore essential for peace-building actors to take into account the possibility that they are competing with surrounding communities for water resources. The United Nations itself, um, again, when we're dealing with post-conflict or, or post-crisis scenario, mobilizes its resources and can have a very large footprint within the environment that we're talking about. Meeting the daily water requirement for refugees without overdrawing water resources is a challenge. Water scarcity and lack of clean water can increase the likelihood of illness such as exposure to waterborne diseases. The UN has developed policies to minimize avoidable mortality among displaced people and the resulting impact on the environment. One of the um, things that we often overlook in post-conflict when it comes to water resources is that a larger number of people often die in the post-conflict setting than they do during conflict largely because they lack access to clean water um, and sanitation. Worldwide, there have been efforts to address the problem of water supply and contamination during humanitarian responses. The UN Environmental Program, or UNEP, has helped shape new environmental regulations specifically for the UN called Greening the Blue Helmets. UNEP, as you probably aware, is perhaps best characterized as the global environmental watchdog of all environmental issues and matters. This report recognizes that peacekeeping operations may place pressure on local natural resources. Securing these resources is fundamental to conflict resolution and sustaining livelihoods in these areas. 
it's a huge undertaking, um, and it's quite pioneering work. Um, I'm, I'm encouraged that that work has started, that there seems to be a very positive buy-in at the policy level and at the decision-making level. Through greening the blue helmets, UNEP is looking at new practices and technologies to lower water use and waste production during UN peacekeeping missions. South Sudan has been a pilot location for testing new technologies. Some examples of new efforts currently being implemented include combining education campaigns with water-efficient equipment such as low-flush toilets and metering water consumption. I think the next stage is better enforcement, better education and actual better implementation of what are more appropriate green policies for the United Nations. So uh, it's, it's a long road and it's a long journey but um, we've certainly taken the first important steps on that process.